You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on plastics in a circular economy. Since they entered industrial production, plastics have pervaded consumer goods and modern life. They're cheap to produce, lightweight and durable, but also can persist in the environment for hundreds of years. To address this global problem, the Commission has identified plastics as a priority area in its Circular Economy Action Plan and is preparing more targeted measures to help Europe improve recycling and cut marine litter. Objectives also shared by the European Parliament. Stay with us. Modern life is unthinkable without plastic. In 2014, over 310 million tonnes of this material were produced globally. That's 20 times more than in the 1960s, and production could quadruple by 2050. Although there are over 1,000 different types of plastic, 90% of them are derived from virgin fossil fuels, representing over 6% of global oil consumption. In 2014, nearly 26 million tonnes of plastic waste was collected in the EU, plus Norway and Switzerland. Two-fifths of this waste was incinerated with energy recovery and the rest was either landfilled or recycled. Half of the plastic waste recycled is treated in the EU, but the other half is recycled outside Europe, mainly in China. But why is plastic so widespread? While it's cheap to produce, it's extremely versatile and it's durable, so it's very well suited for the modern, produced, consumed, throwaway culture. But there's a catch. The loss of material value as a result of single use and low recycling rates, combined with its negative impacts on nature, the climate and our health, are some of the problems derived from the production and use of plastic. To take just one of those impacts on nature, millions of tonnes of plastic waste end up in the oceans, turning them into a sort of global plastic soup. Birds, turtles, whales and many other sea creatures ingest microplastics from this soup. And if these particles have entered the food chain, they can end up on our plates. So what is the EU doing about this? Let's take a look. Although there are some EU laws regulating plastics and plastic waste, there are some gaps in their implementation. But the Commission is getting ready to act. In 2015, the Commission identified plastics as one of the priority areas of its Circular Economy Action Plan, proposed new reuse and recycling targets for plastic packaging, and is busy preparing new measures to help Europe improve recycling, cut marine litter and remove potentially dangerous chemicals. These efforts are part of a larger plan to move towards a circular economy, which is based on sharing, reusing, repairing and recycling, and where products and the materials they contain are highly valued and waste is reduced to a minimum. But how do plastics fit into this new culture? Well, moving towards circularity in plastics could bring both challenges and opportunities. Let's look at the opportunities first. A more circular plastics value chain could enhance the security of supply by mitigating the risks associated with the supply of virgin oil feedstocks. And there's more. It could also bring substantial economic benefits and reduce pressures on the environment. The challenges are weak economic incentives to using secondary raw materials and investing in recycling projects, technical difficulties associated with plastics, recycling processes and costly investments to finance the transition towards circularity. So what's the position of the European Parliament? Well, decreasing plastic waste is a shared concern of the EU institutions. In 2014, the Parliament recognised the need to introduce particular measures on plastic waste and to value plastics as a resource. It also urged member states to take bolder steps against illegal exports and the dumping of plastic waste. MEPs are also pushing for more ambitious targets for packaging waste, including plastics, and for the development of quality standards for plastic waste entering the final recycling process. The circular economy offers a unique opportunity to reinvent our economy, making it more sustainable and competitive. And plastics can also be part of this change. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.